are a lot of weird things about this faint weasel, like how their body temperature is so low that rabies gets possums more than possums get rabies, uh, oh no. or that their nipples straight up look like a devil worshipping cult with 12 milk faucets circling one. And skipping both lunch, dinner, and I think meals for the for tomorrow morning. I did not need to know that. It takes a big man to admit his fault, and an even bigger man to make a video about it and upload it to the whole wide of the world to watch. And that's why Casual Geographics is awesome. I love this channel so much and I appreciate all the time when people either get facts wrong or whatever it is, correct themselves and just let us know. Much like in the previous cat video and by the way, my cat is not here, she's out wandering, um, she's been enjoying the snow. But much like the previous cat video, a bunch of people were going after him, especially regarding the nomenclature for the different cats. and. What my guess is with some of the mistakes that he may have made was that a lot of them were like made retroactively, as in he got some facts that were rectified in the future. As an example, like in my field of study, right, we have this thing called, uh, which is a good example, the Cheshire Cat. Uh, imagine like Schrodinger Cat, but like different. Uh, still dealing with the presence of particles, whether or not there, but with Cheshire Cat, it's more about like the removal of particles. It's a study that was made, um, study, because it gets a little bit complicated, that was made in 2012 that has now been debunked. So like, that's how it is with science, right? We have things that we deem um, our, our current understanding, right? The true understanding of how it is, but it gets revised the more we find out. So yeah, that's what I'm expecting to see here. But first, actually, do make sure to go and subscribe to Casual Geographics and like this very video on the channel. And of course, if you like this one, don't forget to hit the like button and also a notification bell whenever I upload. That being said, let's get into it. Even the babies are one of the most dangerous animals <laughs> in the world, so I built this cage to keep them secure so there's no possible... Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, I've seen this one on TikTok. You're so cute. What's your name? What's your name? Venomous. Venomous. Oh, hi, Venomous. That's... That is so dangerous. Oh my god, this is straight up the kiss of death. That would be a way... A way to go. Oh boy, why so sad? I have made a severe and continuous laps in my job. I'm just playing, I'm playing. But, but can you imagine? Nah, but this is gonna be an accountability video, and honestly- Bruh, don't, don't do us like this. You can't just start a video like that. I thought that he was going to get like canceled by the Animals Rights Coalition or something. For like, oh my god, my brain is freaking dumb. Um, I was thinking for like the 10 seconds that he walked in on frame of uh, like scenes from that uh, song, Kangaroo Court, with like the animals, like animals are taking to the street to cancel this man. Like, like you have him going into court where you have like a jury of rabbits going like, this nigga guilty. <laughs> I don't know why that is the exact song that clicked into my head, but man. It's all because of one comment I got on TikTok. Basically, someone commented on one of my videos disagreeing with me, and someone replied to that comment with something like, yeah, okay, I think I'm going to believe the guy with 16 million followers. Hmm. Yeah, that, that didn't sit right with me. Just because I have more followers than sheep in Scotland doesn't mean my word's law. Mistakes happen. That's why keyboards have backspace and door dash has birth control. So that's what this video is. Animal facts that I've gotten wrong or at the very least didn't get 100%. And starting off is the fact that I don't really even know how I believe. Wow, that's great body paint. Like I was wondering what the hell was wrong with the supposed flamingo's head. Like that was a bit too muscular, like extra appendages, but you got bamboozled pink F Floyd. Wow, why pink Floyd? 
first place. I've already corrected this, but if you've been following me long enough, you've definitely heard me say that lions have a bite force of 650 pounds per square inch. Almost half as strong as their brolic, biracial, tangerine colored cousins. <laughs> Except more recent studies puts the lion's jaw work at closer to a thousand pounds. So what did an afro cat do for us to lie on them so bad? <laughs> Apparently it all goes back to a 2005 video from National Geographic where they tested a lion's bite force. Except they got it from a sub-adult male lion that couldn't have seen more than two or three trips around the sun. Oh. It's like saying the average man's five feet tall because you took a tape measure to a bunch of seventh graders. Right. So the number they got was 691, so Mufasa knows why it got nerfed to 650. We now believe that the Bane of Buffalo has a bite force more in the neighborhood of four figures. Still just under carnivores like tigers and hyenas, but not by the landslide we originally thought. So apparently I owe lions in Africa and Detroit an apology. I was not familiar with their game. <laughs> Quite. Damn. Okay, still for the youngins, it, that is impressive. 690 in per pound per, oh my god pound per square inch it's annoying because when i think unit for pressure my brain always switch back to atmosphere because that's like the SI unit that we tend to use. This video was recorded before the Buccaneers game, and I shall adjust my reaction accordingly. The 690 number spawned from an old show known as Dangerous Encounters with Brady Bar. And we're gonna learn that TV shows aren't the best source for the most accurate information. Who would have guessed? Especially when it's from a time where Steve Harvey had hair and not hopes. Another fact I've said. I know that I'm pausing a lot here. I am one of the post champs in the world, but hold on a minute. So, all of you people. What do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? You people? Why are you calling you people? <laughs> but all of you. Uh, wait, is this a better one? Yes. All of you who have been calling me Steve Harvey. No. For what? God damn it, we have the same hairline. <laughs> okay, I was trying to make apologetics for myself there to say that we do not look alike, but god damn it. Fuck man, if it wasn't for like the difference in musculature and the voice, obviously, I would have been straight him. Oops. Another fact I've said is that tigers are so strong that they can remain standing even after being turned into a statistic. Now, tigers are built like Greek sculptures modeled by furries. Blood from Zootopia proved that, but enough to stand on business even after they're physically finished? Well, if they do, it's probably more of a reflection on their stability than just raw strength. It also could be a freak accident that got reported as a fact. There was a guy that got his will activated while reaching for something in his kitchen, and his friend legit found him that way. And there is at least one animal that does something similar. Since sloths have reverse grip, the Moss Motel of the Jungle can be found hanging on a branch even after they've already been emancipated from the population. Whoa. That's crazy. Okay, that's actually quite awesome. Uh, so, uh, since he mentions Utopia there, uh, weird movie idea. So, since we've had Zootopia, right? Uh, the criticism of like uh, animal society, but like with a reflection to our own movies like Sing, where you have animals again getting into the movie music industry. I would like to see like a version of Free Solo featuring a sloth. Like a sloth going against his nature, having to prove to the world that he is more than just the lazy animal that everybody think themselves to be. So he goes and tries to like, I don't know, somewhere in the Himalayas and just keeps on hanging there for dear life with his claws, like death grip, never falling down. That would be amazing. <laughs> Stupid movie idea, but uh, I, I, I would dig that. But can the cornflakes kitty? Uh Maybe, but it's pretty unsubstantiated, so I probably shouldn't have mentioned it. Along with another fact I've spent most of my childhood believing, and I know for a fact I've said this at least once, that venomous baby snakes are more dangerous than the adults. The idea here is that snakes can consciously control how much venom they release, or if they release venom at all, the baby snakes with less experience, they empty the whole clip every time. Now the first part is true, snake venom is physically expensive to make, so a lot of snakes will compromise with dry bites to get the message across without spending the cost. It's like a blank shot from a gun with vibranium bullets. And the chances of getting a dry bite vary on the snake. The eastern brown snake delivers diet bites an estimated 80% of the time. Something like a taipan chooses mercy only 5%. Snakes can also actively control how much venom actually comes out by contracting certain muscles. It's why only 1 in 500 snake bites in the US result in a census layoff. But does that mean baby snakes are worse? Well, no. 
Smaller, unseasoned snakes carry less venom, and science says you're more likely to get kicked off the mortal coil if an adult bites you. So my right. guess is that the myth came from an old wives' tale to keep kids from f***ing around and finding out with an immature fallen dread of Medusa. And I know for a fact I only got that from an old show on Animal Planet and... Wait, isn't that from, uh... Let me see. The most extreme? Most extreme. Yeah, there was this show here called The Most Extreme. I mean, just look at the logo. Like, If this is not eye-catching, if this is not something that every kid in 2002 was getting enamored by, then I don't know what is. But yeah, uh, I'm pretty certain that it came from there. The, let's see, tapeworm, cuckoo. Do we have anyone on snakes? Yeah, the most venomous snake, blah, blah, the cobra. Man. I miss shows like this. This is where, where we all got our small bits of facts. And of course, obviously, as <laughs> as demonstrated here, some of it sticks around. Well, hopefully I'm not wrong on this one, though. Given the subject of this video, it would be a bit embarrassing. You, you probably know which show that is. It's the same show I also got this. For a minute, it was believed Komodo dragons catch bodies by biting their prey once and then waiting for them to retire to bacterial infection. Komodo Varan. So really, the sooner a Komodo can drag you off the mortal plane, the better, since that just means less dragons to share with. Remember that Komodos are leather bloodhounds that track down death faster than the Reaper. Also, they might not be fast, they're much, much faster than you think. But this whole time, this Jurassic Park understudy actually kills with venom with the helping of anticoagulants to keep you bleeding. That way, even if you escape, the homicidal steroid gecko can always hunt you down. We used uh, didn't we all knew that? We used to think it was blood poisoning, but apparently the bacteria in their mouths isn't really that special from any other carnivore. In fact, if you mouth swabbed a dragon, you'd actually find less bacteria than you would in something like a captive lion or a bipolar looney tune. Yikes. And after looking further, I can tell you the misunderstanding definitely came from an injured buffalo's first instinct to run into water. And a buffalo taking an open flesh wound into dirty, stagnant toilet uh, okay. water is more of an indictment on the bush cow's hygiene than the lizard's. Right. And speaking of water being your downfall, I've talked about animals that can't swim, and I once said that guinea pigs were on the list. Turns out. No, 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 no. Guinea pigs can swim. My sister had several. One died, but she had several. Like, we had very much favoritism in our household. Like, the reason as to why I am so enamored with my four-legged friends and I love them to death is because I was never allowed to have a cat myself because my mom is asthmatic. So, obviously, animal hair does not vibe with her. <laughs> I don't know why I choose the word vibe here because it's not appropriate at all, but you get my meaning. Uh, my sister, on the other hand, though, because of favoritism, still managed to get pets like that, which, of course, were in a small enclosure, so she had to constantly take care of them and everything. However, like, every single time that I would come into her room, right, I would look at one of hers that I had nicknamed Hurt Cobain. I mean, if she ever comes across this video and watches this, she's going to get so mad. But, like, whenever I would stare at that thing, it will remind me of the clip of Idubs going like, I have, I have crippling, crippling depression. depression because they can swim and she will wash them, but they get super stressed. They have like mega anxiety. It's weird to have an animal that is so cute, but so afraid of everything. But I, I think that it, it might have to be very specific to hers because, uh, woo was wrong and i can't even blame animal planet this time guinea pigs can't swim and in some cases can do it for hours the catch is that they don't care for it very much most sources say guinea pigs get stressed in deep water and while they can mm -hmm. swim their ancient ancestors avoided it to avoid getting canceled by predators so nothing about it's a good time for them in other words i'm a f***ing guinea pig now this isn't something i got wrong but i still want to explain it a little more so I <laughs> brother you just sold us all out <laughs> <laughs> we can swim. <laughs> I mentioned how these finches inspired Darwin's theory because, well... Long story short, different finches ate different foods and so developed different size and shaped beaks. Now technically, that's not wrong, but I feel like I made it sound like their beaks changed just because the birds needed them to. Oh. What actually happened was different finches were found on different parts of the islands and depending on where they were, certain finches had an advantage. That advantage could have been something like a particular beak shape and that advantage was more likely to get passed down more often. Eventually, certain traits would get selected for naturally, through purpose, not perfection. That's Ooh. natural selection. And depending Ooh. on the best food source, the finches most suited to feed and breed outcompeted the others. It's kind of like how giraffe necks didn't just get longer, it was more like longer necks outperformed shorter necks and history just wasn't kind of vertically deficient. 
This man needs a deal with like Aesop Rocky or something. He's been dropping bars. Uh, wait, did I just say Aesop Rocky? Uh, sorry, I meant Aesop Rock. Uh, yeah, not, not, they are not the same individual. I'm saying Aesop Rock because he's also like a, a pet lover and he has a cat and uh, a great artist as well. But he makes some bars that are amazing. I recommend listening to the song Rogue Wave. I think it's by the end of it where he has like a, 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 a thing. Well, what, what, what do you say? What, what do you call that RAM structure? Anyways, it doesn't matter, but like a few verses there talking about um, his dog and his cat. It's uh, it's awesome. Transforming a dark. Got a dog nose sniffing out the source of the snark. Got a cat's ears twitching every snap of a twig. Triangulate your position, a simple rabbit to skin. Actually, no, latest studies say the long neck actually came from their mating preference and the fact that giraffes like to run fades using their heads. So why the long neck? Apparently, FNS. To flex and sex. Apparently, the only leave they were worried about is maternity. And speaking of eating, there's another animal whose meal plan I was completely wrong about. Opossums are the rat-tailed relic Australia left behind. They're also free pest control, since one pouch packing possum can terminate 5,000 ticks in a season. Except they don't. We, and well, I, got that wrong. The number comes from an experiment where they introduced 100 ticks to different animals like mice, squirrels, and yeah, opossums, and counted how many ticks had fed and fallen off. According to the study, the opossum cage had way less ticks than all the others, so the assumption was that any tick that wasn't found at the bottom of the cage had likely been eaten. So they took uh. the number of ticks left in the cage, along with the population of ticks found on wild opossums, to come to the conclusion that opossums must put away 5,000 ticks a season, at least. Yeah, not the most solid logic, and later studies examining their stomachs and feces found that the shit literally didn't add up. Not well, okay, that's one of those cases of something then being uh, revised afterwards. Not only does Coma Kitty not pass tense ticks by the thousands, ticks aren't even a preferred part of their diet. Ugh. There are a lot of weird things about this faint weasel, like how their body temperature is so low that rabies gets possums more than possums get rabies, uh, oh no. or that their nipples straight up look like a devil worshipping cult with 12 milk faucets circling one. And skipping both lunch, dinner, and I think meals for the for tomorrow morning. I did not need to know that. The whole thing about them being tick vacuums, that kind of falls on its face. But you want to know what doesn't fall on its face? Cats. They always land on their feet and can survive free falling from a building. So yes. much that cats have about a 95% chance of falling from 10 stories and not flatlining on impact. At least that's what I said. But in the original study from 1987, out of the 132 cats that went to the vet after touching pavement from a window, 90% survived. Wait, 90% of the cats that went to the vet. Someone in the comments pointed out that this was a case of survivorship bias said, uh, there, you wouldn't right. take a dead cat to the vet. And out of the 90% that didn't instantly become a chalk outline, 90% of them had some form of thoracic trauma. Oh right? boy, yeah, okay. That, mm, mm, that's grim. Uh, but yeah, it makes a bit more sense. 37% needed emergency surgery to renew their life subscription. 30% needed non-emergency treatment. And only a third tanked an accelerated sidewalk smack and walked away needing nothing. Also, 17 years later in 2004, another study showed that flights from the 7th floor and up actually caused worse injuries than lower drops. Which cancels out the other thing I said about shorter drops doing more damage. So I think the real answer here is unless you're Shane Dawson, treat your cats the same way you treat your kids and don't let either go out the window. Now how to bring that in. Mm. See, I don't understand. So somebody was very kind leaving a message on uh, one of the previous videos of just how uh, well behaved my cat was, was just lying there. And well, I don't know. It's not exactly like I've trained her or anything or that we've trained her. Uh, I say mostly me because my girlfriend really doesn't want to have anything to do with her because she is uh, she's pescering her. I mean, when you have to carry both a baby and a cat, you know, but she seeks a lot of affection because that's what uh, we've been giving her. We've been very much caring for her. But th that that's what animals then do, right? They will reciprocate the love if you actually love them. But they, they pointed out, uh, the, the person who commented that, yes, it is true. A lot of content creators have this weird thing of cats just, or at least their pets, 
being somewhat annoying because I don't know if it is because they don't have enough time to go out with them, if they are dogs, for example, walking with them, or if they are cats, just stimulating their cats because they need that. They, they're not just household animals that are going to be locked out all day, obviously. So, yeah, that's why they have zoomies at night and during the mornings they sleep, they are relaxed. Yeah, I know that I'm going a little bit on a tangent here, but it's with relation to the Shane Dawson situation. This next fact, I'm gonna be honest, if it wasn't for one comment, I'd probably spend the rest of my life getting it wrong. And it's that REM is the deepest stage of sleep and that insomniacs dream about being reincarnated as a platypus since nature's casserole gets more REM than any other animal. Rim slip. I was yeah. always taught that your eyes twitching out like Kai Sinat meant deep sleep. It's actually the third stage of <laughs> N-R-E-M, that's the deepest. It's called N3, and it's the closest you'll get to cosplaying as a corpse while having a pulse, since it's the hardest stage to wake up from. It's also the stage where your body repairs tissues, builds bones, restores muscles, and strengthens the immune system. Bas Fuck yeah, the most important part of going to the gym. I would know, <laughs> getting enough sleep. <laughs> And yeah, you need to hit those REM sleep hours. That's why you always get that recommendation of at least getting six hours in because you cannot exactly gauge necessarily where you're going to drop into that phase. Children, uh, children, well, more specifically babies, have it way easier. That's why they have those growth spurs or tiger jumps, as some call it. Basically, you know how your phone will update at the gooch of dawn as long as it's connected to an outlet? That's the N3 stage of sleep. It's also when you're most likely to precipitate your sheets or traumatize your family, since that's when bedwetting and sleepwalking occurs. It only lasts about 20 to 30 minutes each stage, and if you're lucky, you'll get about an hour and a half of N3 a night. But it's N3 that's the deepest stage, not REM. But since REM is the dream stage, the platypus still has more real estate in DreamWorks than Shrek. Now this next fact comes from deep in my TikTok days, back when I wasn't so afraid of guidelines. That blue whales release 400 gallons worth of baby batter, with only 10% of that getting where it needs to go. Yeah, I remember this one. For measurement impaired like myself, 400 gallons is like 10 bathtubs of whale maker. Except 400 is more of a reach than a whale's piece. It's actually like 5 gallons per session, and again, that's about one. Okay, <laughs> I was about to say, I feel better about knowing that, but uh, it's still disgusting. Of these, still, most of the liquid daycare ends up getting offloaded back into the ocean. Makes you wonder why it's so salty. Mm. That's a joke, by the way. It's sea foam. They're not actually playing in pre-whale. Speaking of tainted water, this next thing isn't something I got wrong or even said, but something I showed. I saw this video of a manatee getting an assist from some guy and honestly didn't think much of it. Apparently, the law doesn't agree because not only is this illegal, it's hella illegal. You don't want to give manatees water for the same reason you don't feed wild animals. Eventually, the water blimp could lose its fear of humans and boats and end up getting turned into a speed bump. The Florida Manatee Act of 78 makes it illegal to do anything to a manatee, mean, obscene, and anything in between. And if you're offering Dasani, they're honestly better off dead. As dead as the oh. dog from this video. Or maybe not. So you probably remember this story I told of a polar bear petting a dog before turning it into Nemo's mom. But it wasn't actually the same dog that got turned into bear bait the way I said. What happened was this video went viral. So viral that the Canada CBC News got a hold of it. So much that they basically aired the guy out and said that officials had to relocate three polar bears from the same property a week before after one of the bears erased one of the dogs. Apparently oh. owner Brian Ledoon had been feeding the ice bears along with his pack of Eskimo dogs and according to him the one night he didn't feed the glacier goons was the night one of the dogs went on a play date with Old Yeller. It was oh, actually no. before this video and it wasn't this dog or bear. I, I think the timeline's still not 100% clear. Also, the Ladoon guy passed away in 2018, so I guess we'll never really know for sure. Hmm. You know what? That's okay. It's okay to not know. Science is constantly learning, unlearning, and relearning things. Matter of fact, a lot of the things in this video at one point were seen as 100% fact. I guess the moral of the story is, it doesn't matter how many followers I get, I'm not gonna get everything right. I'm no. just not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. Cause like- Thank you. Lesson that Everybody should know. It's okay to say that you don't know. Science educators know this and students especially should always remember this. And if a teacher tells you that it, that it is wrong, that you not knowing something is not correct, regardless of the level, then they are not doing a good job. Okay, I commented that in a pre uh, at least not commented that, but I said that verbatim in a uh, previous video. Actually, also a casual geographic video where I explained some stuff about uh, how we were educated in uh, in uh, chemistry, and yes, that that is that is very important. Neil deGrasse Tyson said, "One of the great challenges in this world is knowing enough about a subject 
to think you're right, but not enough about the subject to know you're wrong. What is blood waffling about? <laughs> All right, that's gonna do it. Drink water, hug your parents. Don't hug humanity. Humanity's f***ed them enough. Let's make this a good year, and I'm gonna see y'all in the next one. Oh yeah, the tiger one, or was it the lion? Yeah, lioness. <laughs> oh, that was a wonderful man. Great video. That's also one. That's also one of the reasons why I very, very much love. A lot of my subscribers, especially those of you who might not be subscribed, at least still leave some comments that are either like uh, constructive feedback or anything else, like some extra facts. Like it, it's always great. It's always great to have those uh, extra info or people like uh, giving you some more insight on something because we don't know everything. But one thing that I know for sure that you will do is go and subscribe to Casual Geographics and of course, like this very video. That being said though, I wish you all to have a wonderful day. See you guys in the next one. Bye.